Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be here on this live. I'm glad you're joining me. My name is Natalie Santini and this is So Hungry Hippie. Let's make sure this is working here. Ramel, can you see if this is working? Can you let me know? Okay, it must be working. All right, let's go. Hi, Loretta. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Good. Okay, it was really weird the way uh, the screen was behaving. Good. Well, let me raise the table up a little bit. Today I have a couple of things to go over, but I'm super excited to talk about the newly released Santorini tote pattern recessed zipper hack. <laughs> so it's not a, a redone version of the Santorini tote pattern. The, the original pattern that was refreshed last summer is still good. If you've never made a bag or if it's your first time through the Santorini tote, I do recommend making the original version. Here's, here's a large of the original version. See how the zipper is at the top? This is a regular size. The zipper is right at the top for easy access, super straightforward, very simple to sew. I use this on the airline, the large size, because it's the perfect size for a carry-on, for the overhead bin or whatever. The version I'm talking about right now is the recessed zipper. So this is how it looks straight on. And this is where the zipper is. It's just a few inches down inside the bag. I had this hack up for a couple of years and recently it's gained some popularity and there were a few questions. So I thought I should just redo it and shoot a new video. And so I did. So the pattern, it's like a PDF sheet. This is the cover. It'll print out like this on your printer. And I just, I just fold it like this and tuck it inside. It's one sheet other than the cover. And there is a cutting chart for your zipper panels that are recessed down in the bag for all three sizes, purse size, regular size, and large. And then on the other side, there are 12 steps. And I included a video timestamp for every single thing that I'm asking you to do for the instructions. So the video is on YouTube and it's linked. I have it in big blue letters, the hyperlink, or you can scan this QR code on your phone and it'll go right to this video. Yay! So that is complete. Now I used, oh, hi everyone. Oh my gosh, everyone's popping in now. Yay. Hi Deidre. Hi Ann. Hi Ruth. Erin, happy birthday yesterday, Erin Joe. Yay. Hi Delva. Hi Kat. I am on this one, on this example that I just sewed on in front of you in the video, I did a fabric topper and a vinyl bottom. The instructions for how you, how big you cut these, if you're doing a contrast, that's all in the Santorini tote pattern. So if you want to make the hack, you need the original Santorini pattern. So it's kind of a, you know, a lot of you already have it, so it's no big deal. Oh, I should mention, this pattern is free for you. The hack is free for you if you're an email subscriber. So definitely sign up if you want it for free. Otherwise, the hack is $3 in my shop at SoHungryHippie.com. It takes a really long time to do videos, at least for me. I'm not an expert. I'm self-taught. And I just kind of fumble my way through it. Uh, so a short 34-minute video takes me all day, if not longer. Well, a day to shoot it, all day the next day to edit it. And poor Ramel, he has to help me with my audio. <laughs> so it's a lot. <laughs> um, okay, where was I? I did fabric and vinyl. And on this bag, I did foam interfacing for both. And then the lining, 
I recommend SF-101 on your lining, but in the video, I didn't use anything on my lining because I just don't want it to stop people. There's always another way to do something. And so if you don't have a certain material, it don't let it stop you from making a bag if you really want to make it. You will figure out what you like best that way. A lot of times when I started sewing, I didn't have anything. I didn't even know what they were talking about in these bag patterns. So I would just make it, you know, with whatever I had. And I learned a lot that way. There's a lot to be said for experimentation. So that's what I did. Now on my recent video for the mint Moonglow Santorini, I used Decoville on the fabric and foam on the bottom, on the vinyl. I like that version too. I've, I've recently had some feedback that Decoville is expensive and so they don't want to use it. And what else can I use? You can use anything, literally anything. It's just an experiment. So it might turn out a little bit different in structure if you use something different than what I'm using. So with the foam, that's uh, this, and you can use any brand. It really doesn't matter. I do recommend using sew-in because I personally have issues with the fusible foam creating wrinkles on the fabric. Some people will do a layer of SF 101 and then a layer of foam and they have good success with that. But I just, I just sew it in. It's not a problem. And I do like my foam and all my interfacings in my seams. I like them in my seam allowances. I either use clips and press it down or hammer it or mash it down with a zigzag stitch or the iron. I don't have an industrial machine. Uh, I have a home sewing machine and I have not had any problems. As long as you're using a, like a chrome needle, universal or a microtex needle uh, and, and uh, do your mashing of the seams, I think you'll be just fine. Some people like to use a walking foot and some people, if you're sewing the vinyl and the foam together, it's an option to use a Teflon foot or flip it over and sew from the foamy side. And maybe that will work better for you. All kinds of things to try and do. That's the beauty of sewing. We get to try all these different things. Uh, okay, so what else was I gonna say about that? Yes, so the three sizes are included. I think Ramel, did you put that link in the comments? So to make this, size, which is, this is purse size. This, I, I like this for every day. Um, I'm a fan of big bags. I often will use this size regular for my everyday bag too, but I like big bags. It's a personal preference. As you can see, I left off the zipper pockets and I wrote this pattern so you can do that. There's up to four zipper pockets, two on the outside, two on the inside. A lot of times I just put one in because I know myself and I know I'll put things in those zipper pockets and then forget where I put them. So I, I do a lot of times I do one zipper pocket on the inside for, you know, my cell phone or a first aid kit, something like that. And then I use my clear vinyl zippy cases, my 10 minute clear vinyl zippy cases for other stuff in my purse. And then it's still organized. So, all right. Does keeping, let me, let me see here. Let me come down here to Ruth. Does keeping the foam interfacing give the bag added structure? Do you mean in the seams, Ruth? I personally, it's such a personal preference. Uh, I like the interfacings in my seams because they will never shift and come out. I have made patterns where the designer told me to keep it out of the seam and later on down the line after some use the foam shifts and it will start you know like coming out and I just it, you know I don't want that to ever happen and I don't think it's hard to sew to keep it in your seams. It does depend on the pattern but I know that at least my patterns it's fine if you want to keep it in the seam. Uh, thank you, Ramel. He put the link there for the Santorini tote. Um, okay, yeah, I'm just trying to uh, 
scroll these really quick. I do want to show you, I've had a lot of emails about straps this week. And I know I've touched on it before, but I just want to review really quick because a lot of times a strap or a handle can make or break your bag, right? So if you don't like your strap, then you won't use your bag. And I want you to love it. So I have um, a soft vinyl here on the table and I have two moon glow vinyls. And I'm going to show you two different ways that I will often make my straps. You can also sew my leather straps onto your bag or rivet them on like I do because I feel like it's faster. All my leather straps are very supple, I guess is the right word. So they're sewable. They're not, they're not stiff, hard leather. Okay. They're much softer and most people love it. I've had the odd occasional person say, oh no, this is not what I wanted. I wanted a stiff, really thick strap and I'll say, you know, go, to, go somewhere else for that because I want to be able to sew through it. So that's, that's one option. Uh, let me switch to the overhead camera here and I'm going to show you what I do to keep my straps from twisting and shifting, especially vinyl. Let me make sure this is good. All right. So right here, I've got some foam interfacing. And I'm just doing a quick demo. So these are really short. Pretend these are long. <laughs> these are my handle straps, okay? So most of the time, what I do is I will cut my strap twice of how big I want it. So if I want a one-inch strap, this is two inches times length of strap. And then I'm going to cut my foam piece three-quarters of an inch. And so what I do I, first, I would fold it and make a crease so I know where middle is. And then I tuck in my foam, fold this back over, and then I clip it like a maniac all the way down. Just tons and tons of clips. And then what I'll do is take this to the machine and I'll sew this open edge down carefully, slowly. Maybe you need a walking foot. Maybe you need a jeans jig to keep your foot uh, level so your needle doesn't break. I don't have a problem. I use just my regular sewing foot and I'm fine with this vinyl and, and these layers like this. So I'll sew all the way down and then I will turn it like this and sew all the way down. Notice I didn't sew down and then turn and then sew up this way because that is going to pull in different directions. So I go this way, flip it, go this way. And if the thread color, if you want it to match, make sure both top and bobbin are matching your vinyl, if that matters to you. I like seeing the stitching, so I don't mind. So there's one way. Now, if I'm doing soft vinyl, I do it exactly the same. I love a soft vinyl strap. They're strong and they're really comfortable and they're mega easy to sew. So just like the other one, I'm gonna bring it across. And you just wanna make sure that no foam is popping out because then you'll see it and you don't wanna see it. So if you need to cut it a little bit smaller than three quarters, you know, you totally can. Always see what works best for you. So then I'll just do the same thing. Sew down this side, clip it, sew down this side. And I've got a really comfortable strap. Now the other option is to use a hem tape or a twill tape or grow, grow grain ribbon whatever you have. This, it won't add any padding, but it will keep your vinyl or your fabric or whatever you're using from shifting. So I would just put it in just like the foam, fold this over and do the same thing. And then I'll trim the excess away. And as you can see, if you're working with a vinyl with the same color interior, 
you don't have to worry about raw edges being a problem because they really match. I've never noticed a problem or seen the inside on any of the soft vinyls. If you're working with a Moon Glow vinyl, let's say, or Stardust or Croc vinyl that is white on the inside, and you close it up and you can see that white edge and that bothers you, you can treat it with edge coat or I color it with a Sharpie. <laughs> I get as close as I can to this and I just go down the edge with a Sharpie. It never comes off and it hides that discoloration really well. So let me transition back over here. All right, so that's what I do from my straps and it keeps them from twisting and getting all crazy. I wanna show you on this Hope bag, I made a wider strap and did the exact thing and it's cushy and comfortable and it's sewed just fine. You can also use leftover quilt batting with the same process. It just won't be as uh, puffy or cushy. It'll be a little less, but it'll feel better than just plain vinyl. So uh, there's that. And then you can always make a fabric strap. And for a fabric strap, I will cut four times my end desired width. So if I wanted a one inch strap at the end to put on my shoulder, I would cut four inches wide by length of fabric and then do this exact same process. But you're folding the edges in to meet in the middle and then folding again. And a lot of patterns have that style, that version in, written in their directions because the fabric strap is definitely easy. Okay, let's see. Let me run through some questions quick before I get to the other things. Yeah. Yes, Elizabeth, we have snow. We had a huge snowfall the other day. Was it yesterday? I don't know. I've already blocked it. And there's still snow on the ground. And it's April 1st. <laughs> Deidre asks, which size do you suggest first time? Doesn't matter. They're all the same. So they're all constructed exactly the same. It just depends on how much materials you have in your stash. Uh, it's personal preference. I, I mean, a lot of folks have let me know that they like the purse size the best, but honestly, I like the regular and large the best because I like big bags. So it's really personal preference. And you can always size this pattern down even more. If the, re if the purse size is too large for you, several people like Aaron Joe has sized it down into a mini mini. I think Betty mom has sized it down in between mini mini and purse. Just play with it. Have fun. You, you can't mess up when you're learning. Even if the bag isn't how you really wanted it at the end, you still learn. So it's still all worth it. And you can cut it up and make something else. Make some coasters. <laughs> Who cares? Just have fun. Uh, let's see here. Yes, I did use my leopard zipper. These are new in the shop, the number five leopard zipper, and it's got leopard print on both sides. I, I love these zippers. They look like metal, but they are not. They're nylon zippers, so you can just sew right over them. This bag that I made probably four years ago, this is a true metal zipper. You cannot sew over this. You have to hand crank your needle and slowly get over the metal if it's a true metal zipper. It'll say on the package, I don't, I don't sell those because <laughs> I don't want you breaking your needle and uh, getting frustrated. So, all right, let's see. What other questions do we have? Hi, hi, Clovis. Hi, Renee. So happy to see everyone. Hi, honey. Uh, let's see. Oh, some people have asked me uh, if they're a beginner, would they be able to do the Santorini toe pattern? Absolutely, 100% for sure. Leave off the zipper pockets. Just make a basic tote like I do sometimes and just do the top zipper. That pattern has a full video walkthrough 
Uh, so you're going to, you're going to get through it for sure. You can do it. Thank you, Ramal, for putting that link in there. Yay. Hi, Kelly from, oh, I just lost it. It moved. It said either Arizona or Arkansas. I bet you're so warm. Okay. What size rivets do you use when attaching straps? I like a larger rivet. So this is a 12 millimeter. They're harder to find. I got these on Etsy. Um, before I found them, I had to use the eight millimeter and they're, they're a lot smaller and I tend to mess them up easy, more easily. I don't know why you want to be careful of the post length on a rivet. If it's too long, when you go to set it, it's gonna, it's gonna just go out of whack. So I like a regular post length. I think it's eight millimeters long. You can buy long, you can buy extra long and they're like 12 millimeters. If, and I think that's for people who are making truly leather bags with super thick layers, they don't work for me. So I like a 12 millimeter head and an eight millimeter post in length. That's what I like. And I use a press. I do not use a hand tool. <laughs> Invest in tools for yourself. You're worth it. It's going to make it a lot easier. Okay. I think I've beat that, right? Um, I can't remember the saying right now. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. I have got more new stuff that has arrived this week. I, I'm, I didn't bring anything up today because I didn't want to overwhelm. But if you're on the newsletter, you might see a few new pictures and products this weekend. And I'm super excited about them. We've got a new soft vinyl in that's a print. You know what it is. Leopard? Yeah. A soft vinyl leopard is in. We're going to get it ready to go. Mel and I, we work all the time. We love it. Uh, we're going to have that ready, and that'll be in the email this weekend. I am really excited about it. Remember, the soft vinyl sews just like fabric. So if you're a vinyl newbie, go to the soft vinyl section. Right now, it says soft metallic vinyl. We're, we're going to switch that to just say soft vinyl because it's like fabric. You can wash it. You can dry it. You can scrunch it. You can iron it from the wrong side. You can make a quilt top with it. You can make a jacket with it like I did, but I don't sell really big pieces right now. Uh, build your confidence first with simple patterns and easy to work with materials. And the soft vinyl is your best friend. So it's not uncommon to jump in and feel like you're overwhelmed and, uh, and get stalled. So don't do that to yourself. Simple can be so beautiful. An easy zipper case, that's my best selling pattern. Easy zipper cases, three sizes, contrast, bottom, instructions included. It's my best seller for a reason. It's simple and it works every time, even for beginners. So there's nothing wrong with making 25 or 30 zipper cases to build your confidence. I did it. I still do it sometimes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah. Sandy says, um, good information on the rivets. Yeah. I use a cam press. I have tried hand setters and I don't do well. So I don't recommend anything I'm not going to use for sure. So if you look up cam, cam presses, they have, now they have snap and rivet press in one machine. When I bought mine, I had to buy two different presses. So, but I'll never get rid of them. They're worth their worth their weight in chocolate. <laughs> what is that saying? Um, Lisa says, hi from sunny Florida. I'm so jealous. Just got my order out of my mailbox. Yay, yay. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I have so much fun. Ramel and I pack these orders together. We have like music going and we're, we have a whole setup. It's been really fun. So nice having help. And we love packing them. Um, yay, Katie's here. Uh, the dog cushion is not available yet. I'm working as fast as I can. It's coming soon. And 
Oh, I should mention the VIP. So certain patterns that will be coming out this year will be free to VIP members. And it's just a, a, a membership club and there's a annual fee. So it's $60 to become a VIP. It's for the whole year. So if you do the math, that's $5 a month and you get 20% off all vinyl, all fabric, all strapping. And last weekend, my VIPs had a special email where they got 20% off those leopard zippers. Bro, like I was just breaking the rules for VIPs for that one time. So it is worth it. Some people that are VIP have made up their $60 in one order. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And a lot of VIPs can vouch. I've been throwing stuff in their box, like little gifts that I love. I should show you one. My friend Cindy, she's pen obsessed, Cindy of Nosy Pepper. And uh, so I bought these great smelly scented pens, throwback to the 80s. I love these. They smell like grape hubba bubba. Do you remember that? <sighs> Street cleaner. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's see. What else? VIP and we have, oh, I'm bringing some other patterns to the shop, ones that I have tested and love myself. And one of them is Mrs. H uh, Hope handbag, which you saw my example a second ago. So I'm going to do a kit of the same kind that I made with the soft gold vinyl and the lining fabric and the interfacings. So be looking for those. Here's my Hope handbag. This is soft gold vinyl and the lining and, oh, and the main zipper. I added all this hardware. That's not how the pattern is written. You just sew the straps into the bag, which I think is easier. I did that because I wear big puffy coats in the winter and I wasn't sure I could get it over my shoulder. You can always just extend your straps too. I will say on the back of her pattern, she said, this pattern is not designed for use with thicker fabrics like canvas, vinyl, etc. You can use the soft vinyl on this. I did nothing special. I sewed this in like two hours on a Sunday when I was watching British Bake Off. So not paying a whole lot of attention. Her patterns are well written. So I will have these kits ready soon. And any of the other ones, and I will always make that bag first or that garment or that object before I put it in my shop. I want you to know that. Okay. Bethany says VIP, definitely more than worth it. Oh, thanks, Bethany. Did you get your stuff this week yet? I always wonder how long it'll take to get to you because you're not that far away. And Lisa got her stickers. Yay! Debbie loves being VIP. I always want to say VIP. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Ruth. I love Ruth's post this week. I just snort laughed, you know. She's on Instagram, see Ruth so. Uh, and her post this week was awesome. Oh, just send me an email, Peggy. I can go back and look at that. Don't worry. Uh, I watch the British Bake Off sometimes. It puts me in a good mood. It's just happy. You know, sometimes you just need to watch something that's really gentle and happy. <laughs> I feel like that show definitely is. Uh, okay, let me run through these. Ramel, do you see any questions that we might need answering right now? I can always try to come back through here. If you don't get your comment answered, I wanted to say this. Uh, Facebook is kind of really weird and how it's behaving lately. And sometimes I can't get to that comment to reply. So if you need an answer, feel free to email me and I will answer you directly. I don't want anyone to feel like I'm ignoring them because I'm definitely not. Sometimes I just can't get there for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Technology. Okay, so let me go through my notes real quick. I think that's all I have for you. Was it informative enough? Let me know if you have anything else. All right, awesome. Looks good. Okay, so I just want to do a, a quick little 
gift to do again, not sponsored by Facebook or YouTube or anywhere else. This is from us. <laughs> so I'm going to send two people a gift card to SoHungryHippie.com. And I think the way we're going to do it is I want to know what you're going to sell next. Like this week, taking some time for yourself to do something. Even if you don't finish it, what are you going to start? Or what are you going to pick up again and finish? Or what are you going to make some progress on? Each project is different. Some take months, some take less than a few hours. Uh, so comment something like that. And we'll randomly choose two people and send you a gift card to SoHungryHippie.com. Remember when that was... Uh, Dot com was so popular. Oh, shoot. A smaller version. Um, oh, that's what you're making, Anne. Cool. I just saw Jennifer. Poor Jennifer. I saw your Instagram. I'm wishing you well. We've had plumbing issues this week, but not as bad as yours. That's the worst. Um, oh, good. Yes. You're all. Oh, hi, Echo. I was wondering if you were here. As soon as I get home, I'm whipping out some clear glitter star vinyl patches for my granddaughters. Oh, Dodie, yeah! Yeah, yeah, of course. Do it. They're so cute. I'm going to make more vinyl placemats. Kat, we use yours every day, the ones you sent us. We use them all the time. So Elizabeth is sewing an Anna Cross body by Bagstock, another Excellent pattern writer, you all. You should know about Bagstock Designs. Love her patterns. Uh, with the rich blue soft vinyl. I love that color, don't you? I just love it. It's so, like you said, it's just rich. Excellent. All right. Oh, yay. Sandy's making an ugly naked hobo bag by Sincerely Jen. Jen's my friend in real life. I'm so happy to hear you're making her bag. Uh, and again, another excellent pattern writer. Truly. And I'm using your rainbow glitter that I just bought. Oh, yay. I can't wait to see that. Yay. I'll have to let Jen know. Be on the lookout. Uh, okay. All right. It's been, well, we're wrapping it up in 32 minutes. Not so long today. So that's good. Again, I'm here for you if you need anything. Make time for you, as always. Make time for you. Try to experiment. Try to figure things out on your own. That's how you're going to learn best. Uh, and the group, the Facebook So Hungry Hippie Makers group, we've got such great people in there. Go ahead and ask your questions in there as well because you're going to get different answers. I have my point of view, and I'm often impressed with other points of view and their replies. So feel free to always post in there. And if you need to pick me up, post in there. Post what you're working on and say, I need, I need some hugs or some shout outs because people will get it. It's a great group. All right. I'm going to head out and get on with my Friday. I'm going to record another episode with Amy for Seems Funny Podcast. Did you listen to the last one? It was hilarious. I listened to it myself and I'm like, ha, 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 ha. and my daughter, she's 14. She comes in. Are you listening to yourself, mom? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> So give us a try if you haven't yet. And if you can, subscribe. It helps us out. All right. Happy sewing. Have a great week. Looking forward to spring, right? Take care of you. I'll see you soon.